Greetings my friends and welcome to a brand new nations guide and today we're going to be looking at Denmark. Um, there have been two uh, requests for nations guide recently. The first one is Denmark which we're doing today and of course the second one is Poland um, and we're going to do both of these. Um, this can of course look at Denmark first and then maybe a few days maybe next week we'll look at uh, Poland. And of course anybody else wants any any other regions or any na nations should I say they do want looked at in, in, a, in a nations guide please let me know and I'll do my utmost try and get that out to you as quickly as I possibly can. So today we're looking at Denmark and I think the first most important thing to look at is what does Denmark start with territorially, geographically, where does it start, what does it have available to it in terms of its land um, and what can it do with that land, what is available to develop in that land in terms of economy and also we, then we look at the military resources, we look at the um, you know the strategies of where you might be able to strike, where your enemies are, who your friends will be, um, you know where your future expansions might come from. So we're going to closer look at that. And as you can as you can obviously f see straight away, you've got the absolute hub here, the apogee, the centre here of the of Danish Empire here, which is Copenhagen, Denmark here, and you've got Norway here, well, Christiana here or Christia Christiania. Beg your pardon, my friends. I must say that correctly. Um, in Norway here, and also off here to the sort of the the northwest, as it were. Here you have Reykjavik, Iceland, also under Danish control. You know, this is a very, very important island. Um, this might just seem to be, you know, sort of a piece of land. You know, slap bang in the middle of sort of the Atlantic, as it were. Here, not doing much good. But actually, this can play a very important role, not in terms of what it provides you, but what it provides strategically in the sort of the latter end of your campaign, or even in the mid range of your campaign here, <clears throat> because Iceland really can be a very, very good jumping off point for any sort of forays, any sort of operations you wish to carry out in the new world. It's a very very good staging er uh, area but we'll have a look at that closer in, in more details later. So let's have a look at what you actually get here in terms of what is given here. So we'll look at the absolute the centre here is Copenhagen. So of course you start off here with Copenhagen itself, a very large city, almost quite well developed actually already here. Of course we've got, we can build barracks, you start with an army encampment, you start with the cannon foundry, the usual government council, a conservatorium, infrastructure again is obviously basic roads already so we've got cobble roads you can move into uh, recruitment again we we'll look at that in the closer details but we've got a regiment of horse demi cannons we've got sakers and we've got militia so pretty much the absolute standard for all or west at least western nations at least this is the the standard sort of the um recruitment you can actually put into effect when you first start and of course you've got a gentleman immediately and also look at this Odense here has got a school absolutely crucial here at schools the research and development is absolutely so so crucial to any nation but particularly one here when you see where Denmark is Denmark is in should we say uh, not an, an enviable position here it is trapped between two or potentially two very powerful foes here. The first of course is the absolute elephant in the room here which is Sweden. I mean Sweden is and at the start of this as you can see here a very very powerful nation indeed and look at the great swathe of land here it already controls and indeed then down here in the sort of the south here south of the Danish regions here is Prussia. Now if Prussia begins to sort of steamroll and start to build up its strength here, you can quickly find Prussia moving in against all its sort of surrounding um, nations very very quickly here. So it's very very important that Denmark gets itself up as quickly as you possibly can into your military of, of course, getting your military but also getting your research up but also critically above all that getting your economy really really strong because you're going to be pro possibly involved in some quite heavy fights particularly against Sweden. Sweden will definitely earmark Denmark and Denmark's uh, lands for itself to be able to expand to be able to move in against Russia because remember Russia and Sweden are sort of m m a good good amount of the time are enemies they are really are sort of long-standing enemies or there's wars and they stop their wars and there's another war so it's always back and forth that toing and froing between wars between Sweden and uh, Russia now Sweden obviously wants to gain as much land as it can away from Russia so that it has the the production it has the economy to be able to take take the fight to Russia and Denmark is, is obviously going to be one of those lands at earmarks or the lands at earmarks for sort of destruction to bring the Danish sort of uh, territories into its fold, into its sort of uh, into the coffers, dare I say, of Sweden here, and that's what you've got to be very careful of. Always be mindful of what your closest sort of neighbours are doing, because Sweden invariably will probably attack you. Not not because they 
you know, obviously there's historical grievances as well. But there's also a very, very good chance that they just want your land to improve their own sort of availability against Russia and also further down the line, maybe against a, resurg a resurgent Prussia. So very, very careful here, very, very careful that you watch what you're doing here because it really is important that you get yourself off to a very good start here within this campaign. So let's have a look what we got here, of course. <clears throat> we've got the school, then we've got a trading port here as well which is always excellent to see here, really good to have a trading port here. Then of course we've got a farm, peasant farm, and we've also got another peasant farm here as well. I believe we probably have a Lubeck, will obviously eventually turn into a trading port or at least some of the, some of the variation of that. And then here you've got a, already got a local fishery here in Norway, we're moving into Norway now, we've got a fishery here available to you. Again that'll help again with food shortages. But then here you've got the ability to also um, put a peasant farm here which also is crystal Remember, it also brings, not only does it bring in money, coin, gold coins, but also, again, helps with the food shortages, helps with growth. Over here into the north, you've got what not many nations get, and that is the availability to have logging timber works here. So the logging camp, look at that, plus 500 regional wealth, straight away for only 800 gold. That's a fantastic, fantastic expansion to have here. And again, you've already got a well-established logging camp here, which is already bringing in 625 the regional wealth. Because look, I mean, look at the amount of forestry available here. It's a wonderful, diverse sort of economy you can possibly put in with Denmark. And up right up here, you've got an average yield iron mine field and that's going to be bringing in 1050 to the regional wealth so straight away Norway is quickly becoming quite a strong e economic hub here for you look at that it expands all the way down here even right to the very end here right onto the border with Russia and Karelia here so sort of Norway and Karelia meeting here you've got the availability of an iron mine 875 to regional wealth but remember this would be almost impossibly de to defend here so you're going to put this up knowing that if either Sweden or Russia attack you or come through or what, sort of want to move through your region lands the chances are they're going to hit this minefield pretty hard here so you're going to possibly lose that income here of 875 but be mindful of that anyway if you put your money into that it's going to cost you a thousand gold be mindful that if if sweden declares war and if sometimes it always doesn't but if it does the chances are it's going to hit this to hit your economy so again norway really could be the absolute economic hub here for Denmark and, da and the Danish sort of empire as it were. And again, crucially, you've got a fort here as well. Fort Fredrik Fredriksson here is going to be pretty crucial here because I remember if Sweden attacks you or wants to take Norway, it's, it's probably going to be moving up the roads here and using the road system. Now, this fort here covers Christian Christiania here. It really does cover it quite well. Quite well. So, in other words, sort of Sweden would have to move through or past this and uh, chances are it's going to be attacked head on here to try and get rid of that. So putting an army into here would actually be beneficial as well as obviously an army in Christiania. So let's look at Christiana Christiania brings you. Now the tax burden here is quite high as you can see. Growth is minus two. So again only the roads and the ministers are bringing in here. Tax is twelve. That tax is so high there it really is crushing your development here. Remember tax can be lowered. If you lower your tax, you'll increase growth both economically and population wise. But again, Christiana can be turned around here. Now, 546 income, not too bad at all. Um, a 33.5% tax rate, pretty high at the moment, but um, Protestantism is very, very high here at the moment, 95%. Uh, we've got Anonism here as well. I'm too, I, honestly, I, I, I do struggle to pronounce these, so I do beg your pardon, my friends, but probably have pronounced these quite completely wrong and again you've got the choice to move either to a military ca governor's encampment which again is going to give you regional tax of plus three but also give you um, recruitment cap capacity of one so you're going to get an additional one recruitment uh, slot and then you're able to get if you do get that regiment of horse regiment of cavalry militia and then once you've got the research for these you'll be able to get a 12 pounder and dragoons from here or you can move down the government's council here which gives you a much greater tax income but your recruitments um uh, options are limited to just the militia and the province cavalry, provincial cavalry. So again, you obviously you get a recruitment slot, but again, it's up to you. Do you want to go down the military route, so in preparation for Sweden, or are you going to want to go down sort of the more the economic route, the more sort of um, civil route, as it were, civil government, uh, where you get the bonus from tax. So that's entirely up to you, my friends. Personally, if it was me and I was this close to a potential enemy I would go mi the military route and sort of take that hit in tax knowing that at least you're able to produce the units quite quickly 
now of course we do have here Denmark and that is actually going very well you've got no economic growth here because of taxes so you can see taxes is playing quite the drag here on the on the sort of uh, development and the growth 961 income here 39 nearly 40 percent here tax um, and again only a very very small increase here only because of agriculture and um, subsidence agriculture is bringing in this 0.14% 1 1 growth here in population again tax burden is hitting this pretty hard so the tax is dragging down is dragging your um, development pretty hard here at the moment but again Copenhagen is going to be the absolute powerhouse of your production here again you want to get barracks up as quickly as possible Barracks is going to give you line infantry, it's going to give you a regiment of horse, then it's going to give you availability of dragoons and also light infantry. Once you've rec once you've researched these particular um these particular doctrines as it were to be able to get these units home. But also it's crucial that you get barracks because it allows you to get military syllabus, which really is the open the door um to much, much more improved uh units and again ring bayonets. So all of these sort of move off one another here, but it's crucial to get barracks because you want the the ability to get that research up and running as quickly as you possibly can and again cannon foundry is going to be important but again you need research of cannons the shot to get that you could of course go to the government chambers because that's going to give you plus 12 percent bonus to region tax and also help you with military technologies that give you additional recruitment slots of two um, and then of course you've got the opera house which is going to help with um, the happiness of the population plus two plus two plus two per turn to town wealth and region as well and also helps you with enlightenment technologies as well so that's excellent as well again you get your roads up and running and remember infrastructure is so important i cannot overstress how important infrastructure is <clears throat> because the movement of your armies the movement of your goods as you can see here you've already got a uh, trade obviously with han over here but improving these roads will not only increase the capacity for the roads which means more income for you but also the speed at which your armies can move back and forth through your territories very very crucial there and of course you start off here with pretty much the standard infantry, uh, the standard armies here, which is a very good general, uh, provincial cavalry, demi cannons, pikemen and militia. Now I'm not a big fan of pikemen, I have to, I, I say this in every single nation's guide, I'm not a big fan of pikemen, I would usually tend to swap, that, uh, swap them out for line infantry, but again that is your personal choice. If you prefer pikemen they are very good against cavalry and, and in certain situations if you can sort of negotiate the angles correctly with pikemen you, they can be quite devastating, but again that is my only my personal preference that is not telling something i would never tell anybody how they should run their campaigns or what units they should use this is just a personal preference for pikemen now again and then let's move on to Reykjavik let's see what Reykjavik gives you here now Reykjavik is can, can be developed quite well here again you've got the peasants farms you've got a fishery here as well but also you've got Reykjavik itself Iceland here again governor's residence is going to give you a boost to tax income Infrastructure is poor here, so we've got seven. We've got no basic roads at all. So basically, looking at paths that have just been sort of worn out over the years of people walking. You need to get the infrastructure up and running here as quickly as possible, because in the end, this will prove vital to you. Although it's not going to give you much income, if you can hold Reykjavik, it will prove its weight in gold eventually. And again, you can only get pikemen here. Um, what can you get? If you get this government's resident, ah, you can get militia. Um, so again, I would. I really sort of increase this as quick as you can because this can be a very very nice sort of staging area eventually but Reykjavik get that up and running get those roads infrastructure moving as quick as you possibly can and of course as we're looking at the military we've got also here um, our navy here the Danish navy you've got an admiral not a very good admiral I'll be fair a poor admiral and cool under fire so actually this balance itself out here minus one to command and sea battles we've got a plus one morale in battle so basically those two sort of cancel each other out He's 45 years old, but he's not a very good admiral at all. He's not really the man you want in a fight at sea. Um, then you've got the six rate, and you've also got a sloop. Again, not a brilliant navy, but again, the navy is going to be very, very important here. The Denmark, it is, it is, by all accounts, going to be the the main thing you're going to need here, especially if you want to hold the Baltic Sea. You know all the way here because the Baltic Sea will stretches all the way through Russian, Swedish territory. It moves into the North Sea. If you want to control the sort of the, st the movement of forces in and out of the North and Baltics and the Baltic Seas, then you have to have a strong navy. And of course, you could always convert one of these again. We've got a trading port here, which you really want to try and keep. But once you've got one of these sort of ports up and running, or maybe you even move into enemy territory and take that. Maybe even move against Sweden, and you'll be able to take Malmo. But Malmo is already trading. Look at that; they've already got. 
France bringing in money and Great Britain bringing in some money to Sweden. Or you could even convert this fishery here into a naval, some f sort of shipyard and naval facility to start getting your fleets up and running, which is probably what I would do. I'd probably dismantle this and then use that to recruit. You can, but you can recruit fifth rates, but they'll only be good up to a, a certain point. Again, you have to balance your economy, you have to balance what your needs of your, of your populace are with your also your military needs further down the road. So now we've sort of had a brief look at what's available to you in the different sort of regions in terms of buildings um, and, and, and sort of a, a brief look at economy. Let's have a look at a little bit more depth of the economy. Let's have a look at what we've got actually, you know, what we're all got coming in here. So we actually start with 8,000 gold. Now that is pretty good, to be honest with you. Some nations will start with six, some will start with seven and a half thousand, some will start with 10, but 8,000 is a pretty good start here indeed. And then you've got a tax income of 1,556, very, very low indeed. As you can see, the army almost outweighs this. So you're just about keeping the army costs under control with your tax. Your trade income is, is very, very poor indeed. Again, your navy upkeep is almost drawing all the money from your trade. The only thing that's really keeping you afloat in terms of giving you a surplus is other here. So negotiations, protectorates, that sort of thing. Um, and 3,821 is your total income. 1,827. So again, you've almost got 2,000 coming in per turn. But that's if you just stand still. That's if you do nothing at all. And of course, you can't stand still. You've got to be able to sort of start producing and start spending your money. So personally, if it was me, I would spend maybe the first sort of year putting together the sort of get the economy running and then start to build up the army get the research going as well but we'll have a look closer look at that policies as you can see here tax levels of sort of mid-range here but if you lower the tax ranges here this although you see your income drop over time over time your wealth will in wealth will improve the population growth will improve because the lower tax levels encourages growth it encourages the population to grow as well and that's what you want in the long run although it affects your immediate income the long term have a long term view of it and, but also if its tax levels are low, if something hits you or something disables your sort of economy, you can always put your tax levels up. And that way then that will sort of absorb any hits you take. So personally if it was me, I usually lower the tax rates as soon as I possibly can. Um, and then until the economy starts to really kick in, um, hopefully you'll be given the chance to keep your tax levels low. But uh, there's always something coming along out of the sort of out, out of the works as it were. And they will hit you and you might have to raise your tax levels to keep your money high, stop yourself going bankrupt, things like that. Let's have a look at the ministers. Now, our king, Frederick, is, again, not giving you anything at all, but also not giving you any minuses, which is always a good thing. So you can see the government population here, popularity is pretty poor, 57%. The constitutional monarchy, so in other words, you can indeed only fire ministers, um, but your ministers are pretty good here. Chief minister, um, the head here is plus eight to the battle region, that is fantastic, plus one to prestige, plus two to town wealth. Then you've got your treasury, not bad at all, pretty good treasury minister here plus one to global tax income plus two to growth trade and plus two to town wealth justice again pretty good there as well but look at the army what a magnificent army minister of war here Faste Villander, what a wonderful site minus six to recruitment cost of all land units minus plus six to military technology race research rate minus six upkeep cost for all army use that is a brilliant minister absolutely brilliant especially for your army the cost of your army will be significantly cheaper than most others and then of course you've got your naval units again, all in good order where they're meant to be. Minus one to recruitment, minus one to upkeep, and plus two to naval research technologies. This is looks, Albert Jacobson looks very, very good indeed. Very, very good indeed. Yes, he would be a good justice minister, or even a very good trade uh, um, army or treasury minister. The General Bonfiant, Jughead, Honest, Patron Morley Impaired. Yes, these are, they've got some very good opposition ministers as well you can always appoint. And let's have a look at trade. We've only got trade with Hanover, and that's over route 615 here. So again, your trade is going to need to be improved significantly if you want to have a look at what you want to get there. Now, as with all my um, nation's guides, you will see some units that aren't available in the standard Darth mod, which, which we're running now. I'm using um, a mod called Additional Units Mod AUM. I will put a link in the description for those of you who want to add this. So some of the units I'm about to show when, the, when we sort of look at the research technology will not be available in the st in Darth mod. It is only available, they're only available if you get this additional mod. Now this mod works with Darth mod. It's been specifically designed to work with Darth mod. 
so don't worry about you know having to maybe you think you know I've got to install Darth Mod and install this new one to get these units. It works on top of Darth Mod. So I'll put a link in the description of how you can get it, where you can get it from. Follow the description how to to, to it and sort of install it. It's very very easy to install. And you honestly, my friends, you will not regret it. I promise you. So let's have a quick look here at our diplomatic relations first to stand where we stand with the major nations because we're in minor nation not a, not a na major nation so Austria are indifferent but look at that you can still trade you can trade with these nations here Austria France are indifferent Great Britain's indifferent Maratha Mughal Empire is indifferent Ottomans are indifferent but you've got a lot of friendly units Prussia is always good to have friendly especially with uh, Prussia Portugal Russia as well uh, Poland Spain are different. Now Sweden are unfriendly. There's your problem. Minus 57. That's the problem you're going to stand there because Sweden will absolutely target you 100%. I can guarantee it. Personally, if it was me, I would attempt to try and get trade with Britain because, again, they're only across the North Sea, is it here? Um, and also with France, if possible. So you'll be able to, you'll probably be able to get two, two trade routes. Um, I would go with Britain and France since they're the sort of the main, the titans, as it were, the, the main sort of. Um, Behemoths, as it were, within the region straight away, the largest empire straight off the bat. Of course, Spain is indifferent, but you can't you can't trade with them, or even Prussia, because then that would come over land. So if you trade with Prussia here, you'd have the land not coming through the sea; it would come over the land. Um, it would come through Berlin, through here. Trade would come out through here, through Hanover, and then move into sort of Denmark itself, which would be absolutely fantastic. Um, but again, that is entirely up to you. But if it was m down to myself. I would definitely be looking at Britain and France as my first trading partners if they give you trade. They may not give you trade. If they don't, then probably look at Prussia. Um, maybe even look at Sweden. If you can try and turn that around, maybe get some trade with them, that might turn their relations around with you. But try and do that if you possibly can, or even go for Austria, something like that. You've got the minor nations as well. Or even try and get some of the minor nations around you if they can trade Venice, but maybe Savoy. Um, Persia, New Spain is very, always a very good trade partner, always a very, very trade, good trade partner. Uh, good, true to their word, uh, New Spain. So then, that's your options in terms of diplomacy and trade. F look at France and Britain. Look at France and Britain, my friends. That really could prove quite beneficial to you. Um, and let's have a look at research and development here, because we'll look at some, what the, some of the things. Of course, I always, always go for plug bane uh, plug bayonets first. Without a shadow of a doubt, I get plug bayonets first. And look what enables you to recruit Royal Cairo Infantry, Infantry Guards, and Scottish Line Infantry. Now, you, I would imagine you can't get these off the bat. You probably need additional, um, you probably need additional research to be able to get those. But they open up the ability once you've opened up some more um, schools here, some more military barracks and drill schools, and academies, and colleges. Once you get to a certain level, you'll be able to get these, but you need plug bayonets because plug bayonets move down to ring bayonets, <coughs> and ring bayonets allows you to get military syllabus. Now, military syllabus opens up drill school. This is where things start to get really, really interesting here, because you can see you already got a, a good here. You get grenadiers, you get ex expatriates, you get the company cavalry, you then get company infantry. Heavy cavalry is also open. Drill school is where things start to get really interesting and where you start to really start to pack a punch in your armies here. Then you also get um, Hakapalitia here, which I've never seen before, but my word, they look very, very good, I've got to be fair. Light, light infantry. Oh, look at that, mountain troops as well. Fantastic there. Light, a uh, clone of light uh, infantry, uh, cavalry, I beg your pardon. <coughs> Grenadier guards, hussars. Blunderbuss shotgunners, and you can also get Highlanders warband, and also line infantry. And there's the other ones you get if you get um, plug bayonets. You need plug bayonets to get these, but you need a drill school to build and recruit these forces you get from plug bayonets. So again, be very wary what you're getting there. Engineers, you get square formation, uh, sepoys, and line infantry. So again, drill school is absolutely the start of something really fantastic. And then we down to military academy. Now, you think you get buccaneers. You can also open up line infantry guards once you get model bayonet drills, because these red circles around here means you've got to rec you've got to research a particular technology to be able to unlock the troops. Um, so this red circle around here means you need new model bayonet drill to be able to get new line infantry guards. Heavy cavalry. Um, what else? Have we get anything different here? We've gotten before. We can't get before grenadiers. Ah, there it is. Cuirassiers. That's the difference there. What a wonderful sight. Cuirassiers really do make a difference to your armies. They really do. Then we can move down to Military Academy. Let's have a look at Military Academy. It gives us... Wow, we just looked at that. Sharpshooters. 
and let's have a look at army board which we've clearly looked at that and army board will give you unlocked platoon firing sh shortened carbines and light infantry doctrine what does it give you additional here you start to get now experience when you when you begin to recruit these units as well which is very very valuable to you it really is look at that household cavalry what a wonderful sight there look at that the absolute apogee the royal guards cuirassiers of course line of three guards with experience grenadier guards with experience lancer guards i do like the lancer guards look at that charge bonus absolutely brutal um, then you've got mountain troops the same as standard here sharp shooters with experience as well and we're then starting to move down here then into army staff college guard units african native infantry Oh, horse grenadier guards. Oh, look at that. Hakapaletti uh, here with two bar experience. Fusiliers. Anything else we get here? Curacers. Oh, Republican guard. Absolutely fantastic. So, uh, oh, and riflemen. Um, so, again, you've got a very, very good complement of troops here. And it also enables machine rifling and percussion cap as well. So, that is going with the AUM mod. That allows you to give get a really good. Um, established army here very very good forces here indeed and that my friends is to do with the research here get, getting research is crucial personally I would go for plug bayonets um, then I would go for ring bayonets then I would get military setups I'd focus on these three first these three line this line here first to get down to drill school then start looking at the uh, sort of e economy agriculture maybe looking at metal industries when you get a bit that available maybe even looking at ph uh, physocracy here because that does give you quite a boost here um, to your sort of wealth generated by farms and town wealth and growth to trade income as well. Now, where do we look to strike? This is the next, this is the last sort of, and the, also the biggest question. Whom do we look to sort of look at potentially striking at, out at? Now, where you are at the moment in sort of the north, northern Europe, sort of it, as it were, there's, of course, immediately strikes out, there's Sweden. Sweden is going to be your biggest enemy. They're going to come for you pretty hard, my friends. Let's be absolutely honest here. If you, if you can get the forces up to be able to take Sweden on directly, this stock, Stockholm here, and further afield you've got uh, Finland, and of course, sort of here in the Baltic Sea, you've got Riga and Saint Petersburg. So again, but Saint Petersburg will definitely be the sort of the jewel that the Russians will want. And Russia will want Saint Petersburg. So there's going to be a fight between Russia, Sweden, and Russia for that. Personally, if it was me and I, and we had to go for a Swedish territory, I would put all efforts into trying to take Sweden out of Stockholm here. If you take Stockholm, you've sort of ripped away the main hub, the main production hub of the Swedish Empire. Look at that, it's even got uh, fortress uh, fort fortifications around already. That's how established they are, so they're going to be pretty tough to take. But, I mean, look at, look at the sort of ec economic growth they can push in here. Minefields. Um, they've got logging camps, they've already got a craft workshop, another craft workshop, they've got a school, they've got a port. So again, if you're prepared to put the back backbone work into this and pushing an army out as quickly as possible, that you know, and also scout, remember, always a scout what you're up against because you have no idea what you're up against here at all. So use this fleet here to s uh, move it to here and scout. There's also this Visby here, fishing, fishing fleet here, fishing fleet, so that's going to be another additional to if you can take it. But if you don't want to take Sweden, you just want to go on the defensive against Sweden, you want to push out somewhere else. Look at the Netherlands here. You're at peace with the Netherlands, but they've only got this one territory here in Europe. They have other territories elsewhere in the world. But Netherlands could really be a real powerful stepping stone here. I know that they're at war with Spain, um, and by proxy probably at war, at war with France eventually as well, but Spain is their enemy of them. If you could move in against the Netherlands here, look at that. I mean, look at the fortifications. That, again in this sort of in this small land they have the region they have they've got quite a powerful punch here in terms of their economy or you could move in and take Hanover and expand start expanding into sort of mainland Europe as it were taking over Hanover although they are at peace with you and you've got a trade with them you could move in against Hanover but it's always be careful what you're doing here because Hanover probably have allies of Britain and Westphalia so if you took them out that would actually hurt you quite significantly Sweden don't have any allies so again, that is something you've got to consider here. They, if you take Sweden out, nobody's going to care. They've got trade with France and Britain, but that's that's a, something else that you shouldn't really have to worry about. But if they've got no allies, no one to back them up, no one to worry about you you attacking them. Um, Prussia, on the other hand, 
has also no no allies either. They're trading with um, they're trading with Poland and they're trading with Hanover. But again, if you were to have the strength in numbers, you could even move against Berlin and pretty much unite all of the sort of the northern tip here of of Europe, here the northern part of Europe, the coastline of the Baltic here could be come under your control. The vast swathe of the Baltic coastline could come under your control. You've got Gdansk here co controlled by Poland, but again, and you've got also got the rest of the Prussians would be over here as well. But the Prussians would probably launch some kind of counterattack against you from Konigsberg unless war unless they went to war with Poland or they went to or Austria and the Prussian uh, sort of war will definitely flare up and that might tie them down for a long time. Personally, if it was me, I'd either focus on Stockholm or Berlin because these two can provide a magnificent amount of production but also sort of take away the main threat you're going to face and allow you to start building up your economy, start building up your army to sort of venture further. Sorry about that, my friends. So again, <coughs> but you've got all of sort of the central Europe at your disposal here if you if you decide to, but again, take small steps when you're moving into these regions because you are going to be potentially up against some very, very powerful foes here in the future. If you strike early, you can take quite a lot from them, but it's holding that, what you've taken. And that's really the crucial prospect here. And again, you can move further afield into sort of the new world, and that the new world is open to you. But again, I wouldn't worry about the new world or sort of the subcontinent, India, just yet, because that seems that's that's something that's out of reach at the moment when you're, with your, when you're Denmark. Focus on your near neighbours. Focus on local events to bring that under your control. But my friends, I'm going to end this episode here of the Nation's Guide. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please comment down below. If you've maybe played Denmark before or you've, you, you've intended to play Denmark, please let me know what happens. Please let me know what you think. Please put some new comments down below. You know, get your suggestions down there so we can sort of build up that nice sort of um, um, sort of almost encyclopedia of different nations. So those anybody who's interested in coming to Total War wants to choose a nation, we can sort of help them um, steer themselves into sort of, you know, maybe they want to take Denmark, maybe they're from Denmark and they want to you know, play their home nation as it were we can help them sort of achieve that and be absolutely fantastic it really is but I hope you've enjoyed this my friends hope you, having a gr hope you have a great weekend coming up um, be safe whatever you're doing but until next time my friends bye for now <laughs>